and he is relentless. Uh, he will not stop because he recognizes that a child of God is a threat to the gates of hell. He knows that you're a threat. He knows when you start praying and fasting and believing, uh, lifting your hands in worship. He knows he's in trouble, so he has to put you through difficulties. Uh, he has to lay snares and traps uh, because his aim is your faith. He's not after your husband. He's not after your wife. He's not after your kids. He's not after your car or your house or your dog. He's after your faith. Because once he has that, once you no longer believe what you used to believe, he's won. Naomi was of this type. What does she say? She, she comes back to church. You read it in the book of Ruth. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Aggressive. Stared the women in the city down. Don't you call me. That. How dare you go. I went out full and the Lord brought me back. I mean just this unbelief. This weird prayer that she prays as she's going back to Jerusalem. She prays with Orpah and, and Ruth. She says, go back to your gods. Wait a minute. You just told them about the God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And you're going to bless them by going back to idolatry. You ever read that? girl what's wrong with you unbelief the guard at the gate of Samaria Elisha stands up he says this time tomorrow everything is on sale oh there's going to be flour there's going to be grain there's going to be food because they had been under siege the Syrians had sieged them I mean it got so bad that they were eating donkey heads and dove droppings I mean that's pretty bad there were two ladies uh, that went to the king and argued, hey, we agreed to eat my son Tuesday night, and Wednesday night we were supposed to eat her son. That would be a counseling session for the ages. But this is how desperate people are. It was a desperate situation, um, and here comes uh, Brother Spiritual. Brother Spiritual, Sister Spiritual, they're always around, amen, in our seasons of unbelief. By this time tomorrow, I'm like, oh, yeah, tomorrow, but we're going to be greasing back. That's an old Austin, Texas term. We're going to be, amen. Some of y'all can't wait for next Sunday night. I'll be, I'll be nice to you. I'm not going to preach long. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm going to let God do his thing, though. Amen. Might have a couple demons to get cast out, but that's okay. The guard stands up, ah, God can't do anything. He's, you know, and just having this old nasty attitude um, and begins to charge uh, uh, the prophet, get all in his, because when you're, when you live in the season of unbelief, uh, you'll be very aggressive. You'll put yourself on the same level as your spiritual head. How can God, God, if God opened the windows, read it. If God opened the windows of heaven, surely he couldn't help us. And Elisha rebuked him. He said, God is going to do this but you're not going to be a part of it. Thomas, the disciple, amen, talking crazy, amen. You know, there's some people that are locked in on crazy. Well, unless I see the nail marks, right? And they're like, hey, man, he risen from the dead. We saw him. Mary, she went to the tomb, and this, I went, and I thought, yeah, right, whatever. And he's aggressive because unbelief is hostile. We can talk about the Pharisees and the Sadducees tonight. Um, Paul reminds us um, of the anger God had with such people. Their position has grown beyond the fear, now enraged by failed expectations of, of a God they refuse to follow or even get to know. And Paul says the only way we'll know Jesus uh, is by the fellowship of his sufferings. Uh, this is what he tells us in Philippians, uh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. If I'm really going to know Jesus, I'm going to have to go through some things. The carnal man cannot travel the path with faith. Therefore, many succumb to unbelief. You know, sometimes we have to ask ourselves some tough questions. Like, when people display faith or vibrancy in their faith, how do you react? Do you react angrily? Cynical? When the morning comes, do we shrug off the conviction to come and pray? When disciples rise up, do we react with envy or even contempt? Um, I, I don't know about you, but I have. I can't believe Pastor put that clown in ministry. I ain't getting in that ministry. 
these are words that come out of my own heart. Now, I'm smart enough not to say it out loud to other people, but it really doesn't matter, do it, do it. Because God hurt my heart. I struggled through many seasons of unbelief. Hey, man, I love to sit here and tell you, man, it's just been me and Jesus, and we've just been coasting. I just walked on the water last Tuesday. I, I would love to tell you that, but I wouldn't be telling you the truth. There are seasons of unbelief trying to figure out, trying to process things in life. Why did my young sister die? Why did my uncle die the way they did? Why is my granddaughter going through what she's going through right now, and there is nothing I can do about it? Why are my children up in their rebellion? Why? What is going on? God, we raised them up. We showed them the truth. We lived out the gospel. They saw it, amen, of their own testimony. And what is going on? And it's very easy to slide into unbelief. What's the use? And on? And we go on and on. And it is only when I shake myself Realizing that the presence of the Lord is no longer there, I begin to repent. Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 6, then he went down from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished. Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this, is this not the carpenter? Or in 2021 uh, vernacular, ain't that Mary's boy? That's Joseph's boy, ain't it? Who does he think he is? This is, the, this is the attitude they have. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Because when you walk through a season of unbelief, uh, many of us, we can despise people that display faith. Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives. And some of you might have even experienced that. Amen. Remember the first time you witnessed the people in your family? I changed your diaper. You didn't come up in here telling me. Amen. I went through that. I'm a young 16-year-old teenager, amen, just full of faith in the Holy Ghost, amen. Uh, and boy, at that time, my family tried hard to snuff all of that out. What's this speaking in tongues? And why are you going to that church and the white folks? And blah, 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 blah. I, I heard that. Amen. Or is it just me? Unbelief is very hostile. The Bible tells us in Mark, Mark 6, verse 5, now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about to the villages in a circuit teaching. Like, surely of all places where I grew up, amen, they've seen the success. They've seen the hand of God on my life. Surely I can come home and bring about revival. But because of their unbelief, he could do no works. That's pretty scary because my God can do anything. But even there are some things that God cannot do, and that is violate our will. So if you and I struggle with unbelief, what's left? You know, I think about this text, amen. Why did the father bring his, uh, his son to Jesus? There must have been something left. We recognize that this is a spiritual man, or at least uh, he has some rudimentary knowledge uh, of the kingdom of God. My son has a mute spirit. Amen. Only people acquainted uh, uh, with, with, with the kingdom of God speak like that. Amen. Like the rich man who died and went to hell. You, you read about that in Luke chapter 16. The Bible says he's talking to Abraham. How did he know it was Abraham? He's having a conversation with him. He recognized this is the this is the patriarch. This is the patron saint. Uh, surely uh, he can I can speak to him. He recognized that it was Abraham. He recognized that it was heaven. He had some kind of faith, but it wasn't enough to save him. So why? Why did this father do this? There was still something left. There was still a maybe. Because unbelief can be turned around. Can you say amen? 
Unbelief uh, can be done away with. Unbelief can be crucified. You can be delivered from unbelief. Uh, something deep, deep down. Amen. As carnal, uh, as, as carnal or angry or cynical uh, as you may have become over the past few weeks. Amen. Why you still come to church then? Because maybe, just maybe, there's something left. And you know what draws that out? It is the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Christ will draw out whatever is left inside of our hearts. 1 Corinthians 13, amen, the love chapter, many would title this. Verse 4 says, love suffers long and is kind, amen. In other words, love puts up with things, hallelujah. Amen. The reason why y'all still together is because she love you. <laughs> She's, she suffers long. <laughs> love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not easily provoked and thinks no evil. Love uh, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, uh, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Uh, in your unbelief, as hostile as you become in and out of season, why are you still around? The only thing left is love. One of the divine deposits uh, into our soul at the inception of salvation uh, is love. Um, God, uh, amen, forgave your sin. Uh, he, he washed away the sin. Thank God for that, amen. But he also deposited his love. And we struggle with our unbelief. We struggle in times. Uh, there are things we don't believe anymore. Uh, we begin to question why and this and that. But we still come to church. Uh, we still come. We still fellowship. We say, what, what, what is left? It, it, it's love. No matter how hard it gets, no matter the situation, if you have love, you can conquer unbelief. The chapter before that in Mark chapter 5, the Bible speaks of the Gadarean demoniac. God's love is, is just, sometimes I, I, I just shake my head. I mean, think about the events that led up to that. Jesus got into a boat, got his disciples into a boat, went down into the bottom of the boat and fell asleep, right? A storm came. There's water coming in the boat. They're rowing. They're trying to bail. They're doing all the. Jesus is knocked out. I wonder if Jesus drew when he sleep. I don't know. I'm going to ask him that. I mean, he, he was gone. Because Jesus, Jesus is cold, y'all. I got this. I'm the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, he don't care. He go to sleep. He's snoring down there. And they are freaking out. They said, Lord, don't you care that we drown? And he's like, oh, you a little faith. Why did you doubt? I'm with you. If you drown, I'm going to drown too. He gets up, stands out on the bow, peace be still. Like it was nothing. And then all of them just kind of looked at him like, hey man, he looked like he got something. That's the Lord. That is the Messiah. He, wow, even the wind and the waves obey him. So he goes through this storm. He goes through all of this turmoil just to reach one man. One man. Just to give us a snapshot of his love. Amen. Some of us, we see somebody walk in the house, well, they ain't getting the flyer. But he's willing to go through storms just to reach one man. Wow. The Bible says that this man is naked. He's cutting himself. He's running around tombs. Amen. I'm prayerfully considering a sermon. Why are people so fascinated with the dead? It's amazing to me. We went, went through the zombie apocalypse. Amen. I made it. People, you know, I died over and over again. And it's like, what's wrong with you? 
We're fascinated with the dead. Great Britain began to complain because there was just so much coverage about Prince Philip and his death. I mean, I mean what, what kind of coverage was it that, that caused people to complain? We have this fascination with death. But anyway, he's running through the, the tombs. He's running through the cemetery naked and screaming at night. They're trying to bind him in fetters. He's breaking them. He's, he's cutting himself. I mean, this guy is a madman. Very similar to what's happening in the world today. Everybody can't wait to get naked. Running around cutting themselves. That is a horrible spirit. I pray a lot of teenagers, uh, uh, especially teenage girls, um, are very, they're, they're more likely to cut. They don't feel that they're good enough. And I mean, the, the lack and the loss um, of dignity, the devil is cruel. Amen. I declare tonight, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. If you're listening online and maybe you struggle with it, let me tell you something. Uh, God created you. Uh, amen. God loves you. You are the jewel. Amen. crying out but the bible says when he saw jesus from afar off he ran and worshiped him listen church not even a legion of demons can stop this man from worshiping jesus we've all gone through bad times and struggles but this guy was on a different level amen and even in somebody like that there was something left Enough to bring about deliverance. Deliverance from demons, not exactly. Deliverance from unbelief. There was hope for this boy uh, in our text uh, because the father, though trudging through unbelief, brought him to the Lord. Miracles were done that day. Two miracles were done that day. His boy got healed and he got delivered from unbelief. Will you bring all to Christ? I thought this was very interesting. Uh, Pastor Ruby had made a comment about it, uh, and it just quickened to me just now. The father brought the son. The son is the one with the mute spirit. How many follow me so far? Jesus said in our text, uh, if you can believe, all things are possible. Amen? Because if I can get the father, if I can get the father to believe, then the children will be set free. If the parents would believe, then the children would be set free. If the, if the former generation, uh, if some of us, oh, amen, some of us, we some old, uh, some old converts up in here. Can I talk to the old converts for a minute? If we can believe again, if we uh, can, uh, can say, yes, um, I brought to you this new convert. I brought to you my daughter, my son, uh, my teenager, uh, my husband, my wife. Uh, amen. Uh, if God can get you to believe, I appreciate this man's honesty. He said, Lord, I believe. That's why I brought him in the first place. But God, there's unbelief that I still struggle with. God, help me. Can we just be humble for a little bit and say, God, help me. I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know how to be a father. I don't know how to be a wife. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, I'm just human. And, uh, but God, you know everything. And if I trust you, God, help my unbelief. Where I fall short, God, help me. I promise you this. The boy would have never gotten healed if the father didn't bring him before God. Bring them before God. Typical, typical day during the week. Father, in the name of Jesus. Listen to my wife when she prays. Father, protect her. Father, heal my granddaughter. God, give the, give the doctors, give the surgeons revelation that they figure out what's going on and bring about a plan. God, do something. Father, I pray my brothers and sisters in the church. God, cover them. Protect the church. I bind jealousy, envy, discord, and strife in the name of Jesus. Typical day. What am I asking for? I'm asking for help. Help my unbelief. Because there are times I don't believe that you're going to change. I don't believe that you want to get better. I don't believe that you want to, God, God, I, I, I believe, I think there's something there, but God, help my unbelief. I don't need you to answer all of my questions. I'm not asking you to make it make sense, amen, because tomorrow is none of my business if you're in control. I have no business in the cockpit. Amen. I'm, I'm sitting back in coach with, with everybody else. 
Amen. I don't need to know all the pressures and the, and the knobs and, and all. I don't need that. Amen. You fly this plane. Come on, somebody. Because the last time I flew it, we, fed, we went right into a mountain. So, God, you, you take care of this. But, God, you know, there's times where I feel that we're not going to get there. Help my unbelief. I want to believe and trust you again. Will you allow the Lord to help your unbelief? It'll erase the hostility. It'll erase that, that, that feeling, that anger, the anger inside. The, you know, many times, not all the time, but many times, depression is nothing more a frustration of the self-will. This is what I want to see. This is what I want. I, I just want my way. And God's got his thumb in your chest and said, no, you will not. The Bible tells us that Jonah even paid money to flee the presence of God. What was he going through? He's going through a season of unbelief. When he surrendered to God in the belly of the great fish, God was able to restore this man. And because he was restored and delivered from unbelief, thousands were saved. What can God do through your life if you just bring what you have? Can we get personal with Jesus? Amen. Get personal and say, God, this is, God, I believe, but bring that to God in prayer. Because you get real with God, God will get real with you. God will help you. The Bible says Jesus, God, God, he wrestled with Jacob all night. Why did he do that? Why did he put up with him? Because he, he needed to draw Israel out of Jacob. He needed to draw that out so that he could change him. And he made him a great nation, didn't he? Hello, somebody. He made him a great nation. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. This is the problem, God. This is where I struggle believing you. Meet God at the altar right there. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Hallelujah. We're going to close in prayer tonight. God bless you. Amen. But before we close in prayer, I want to extend an invitation. There are people here tonight, and maybe you're online. You're not saved. You don't have a relationship with God. Let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. All of us, amen, myself included, uh, uh, we struggle. We go through seasons of unbelief. But there's something left. It brought us here tonight. There's no need to fear. There's no need to worry or to fret. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. You don't have to worry. You let God be God. You let God touch you. You let God be real to you. Amen. If you prayed like me, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God will meet you there, friend. God will meet you where you are. That's the God we serve. And perhaps you don't know the Lord. You don't know the Lord like that. Maybe you were raised in church or you've gone to church. And, but I'm talking about things deep down within the soul. We're all familiar with sins of the flesh. Amen. I can easily get up. I can preach on adultery. I can preach on fornication, lying, gossip, stealing, you know, and, all, and, and, and that's true. Amen. But there are also sins of the heart, sins of the spirit. We begin to deal with envy. We begin to deal with wrath, unbelief, fear, depression, anxiety. These are things that we wrestle with. The world wants to label it. Oh, it's a sickness. Oh, it's a sickness. Oh, it's a, alcoholism is a sickness. And, the, you know, oh, I'm bipolar. I'm this. I'm that. Listen, friend, we are fallen creatures and we are subject to sin, beloved. Sin is the real culprit that must be dealt with to bring about true deliverance and give us the strength that we need to go through the things that we cannot do on our own. We need God to help us. There are people here tonight, you need to be saved. You need the forgiveness of God tonight. The answer is not more money. The answer is not a better car. The answer is not material gain. Listen, the answer has always been Jesus. He's the one that brings joy. He's the one that brings, brings peace and life. Let him do it. Regardless of your circumstances, your circumstances may never change, but your heart can if you give it to God. And so before we close tonight, if you're not saved or maybe you're backslidden in your heart, 
you need to come home. You need to come back home to Jesus. I want you to raise your hand for prayer. We're going to believe God with you tonight. Amen. God bless you. Will there be any others? God bless you, sir. Will there be any more? Let God forgive you. Let him meet with you. He wants to meet with you right there. God, this is, this is the issue here. This is what's going on in my heart, in my soul, right here, God. I need your help right here. Lord, help my unbelief. Oh, God is so faithful. God delivered that boy. God delivered him. God delivered his father too. He had hope again. I had mentioned the widow with two mites. She gave again. She dared to believe God again. She believed. You know what I love about the widow with the two mites? Jesus did not feel sorry for her and give her her money back. There's no way Jesus was going to rob her of her blessing. I, I, I pray that, you know, I pray that we die and, and we go into eternity. I pray that she's there and I'd love to ask her, amen, after you gave, after you dared to believe God again, what happened after that? I'd love to have that conversation. Why? Because somewhere she dealt with whatever life threw her and she decided to trust God again. There are people here tonight, listen, you need to trust God again need to dare to believe God again. The unbelief in your heart is caused to hostility, a negative aggression. You need to give that up because deep down in you, deep down inside, the love of God is there. Let him draw it out. Let him draw it out. Come, repent. Say, God, help me. Help my unbelief. If you raise your hand tonight, I want you to slip out of your seat from wherever you are. Make your way to the altar. We're going to pray. If I can have some brothers and sisters come and pray with these precious people tonight. Maybe uh, uh, you didn't raise your hand, but you want to come. So you know what? I need to meet with God. I need to do business with God, if you will. Hallelujah. That's what the altar is for, beloved. It's where we meet with God. We sacrifice. Hallelujah. Isaac said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, The Lord will provide. Bound his son to the altar and was about to take up the knife and God did a miracle. Something was broken in Abraham that day. Read about altars in the Bible, friend. People's names are changed. Lives are touched. Nations are delivered. We can go on and on about altars tonight. God, I want to meet with you. As the scripture would tell us in Hebrew, uh, O-L, Moed, where divinity meets with humanity. God, we need you tonight. Listen, church, you can believe again. We can believe again. I believe, I dare to believe God. Father, help my unbelief. Help my struggle. Help me to trust you when things don't make sense. Help me to cling to you when I'm so tempted to go the other direction. I'm so tempted to just uh, give up uh, and be carnal uh, and dare anybody to say anything about it. Lord, help my unbelief. I have become weak like any other man. Remember that? God, help my unbelief. These altars are open for everyone to come and pray. Come on, church, let's lay a hold of God tonight. We need God to speak to us. We need God to help us tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. Father, we believe, we choose to believe, yeah. Hallelujah. Transform our lives, yes. Ooh. Have your way, yeah. Have your way in our hearts. Have your way in our lives, God. Father, I believe you for my children. Father, I believe you for my granddaughter. Father, I believe you, Lord God, uh, as you bring revival to this church. Uh, God, as you save people in our city. God, do it again. Do it again, God. I choose to believe you again. Come on, church. Let's lay hold of God. Hallelujah. Father, we need the Spirit of God in this place. God, we need you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Merciful God. She got out of my rebel to serve my son. Merciful, merciful. 
Hallelujah, you can stay at the altar as long as you like, amen. Those of you in the congregation, would you stand and worship with us as we sing this chorus with all our hearts. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like me. One more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Let's tell the Lord we love him tonight. Let's worship God together. Hallelujah. February the 28th and August the 7th sometimes can be very difficult for me because February the 28th, 2007 is when my sister died and August the 7th is her birthday. And it just doesn't make sense. I mean, she's, I mean, come on. She's 26 years old. She's in prime of her life. She's doing what she loves. She was a social worker. In fact, she was working the night she died. She was hit by a drunk driver. <laughs> she was actually on her way to my house. I'll, I'll never forget the phone call. My, my mother never calls me. And, and not that she don't love me, but she, you know, usually there's something like, okay, mom, what's going on? I'll never forget that night. But you know what gives me peace, I process that is, is I, I often think about her favorite worship songs and I often rejoice although bittersweet in uh, we, 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 we found out about the accident we, we, rushed to, uh, we rushed to Austin, Texas she was attending a church uh, it's not in our fellowship, in, uh, in Austin, Texas and uh, we went to the youth leader's house uh, that night and all these young people, they, they 18, 20, 22, something like that. And they had a video of her and, and you know, and for, I, I want to say at least two hours, they all took turns giving testimony about my sister. Her name is Krishana. We called her KK for short. And it's, yeah, man, I was, I was struggling. And KK came, she, she came by my house and, and she prayed with me. And, and this is a side, I, I never, I never knew this. I knew my sister had gotten saved, but I didn't know that I didn't know she was in like that. I didn't, I didn't know the impact that she made. She was supposed to go to Peru that summer for a, uh, a missions trip. I, I didn't know, it was like a whole world opened up to me. I was like, wow, KK did this? And then my mother told me, she said, you know what, Mont? When, when, when KK uh, started going to church, she told me something. I said, what are you talking about? She said, you know what? She said, Mom, I want to serve God like Lamont serves God. I don't want to just go to church. I want to be in. He is sold out. He is, man, he's just, you know, I want what he has. 
I had no idea. She lives in Austin. We were, at the time, we're living in Colleen, you know, and, and, and all this. And, and, and so I didn't see that. So it's kind of bittersweet, like, man, we could have done something together, you know. But just to hear, you know, that's what gives me, that's what gives me comfort. It's like, you know what? She served God. She served God. And while I, I don't understand what happened or why and all that, but you know what? Like I said before, tomorrow's none of my business. God knows what he's doing. God is in control. And I tell you, man, I was blessed by that. And that's what gives me comfort in those times. It gives me comfort knowing that, you know what? She served God. She served God, man. There's, there, there was something left. There's love. I don't know, you know, I, I had made mention about my uncle. He died in similar conditions. I know that he had gotten saved and the pastor was working with him. I don't know how long, how far along he was in his relationship with God. I know what he was before he got saved. But what gives me peace is, you know what? My uncle was real and he knew that we loved him. Because every chance I went home, all right, Uncle Doug, and I begin to tell him about Jesus. Actually, all my uncles, but he's really the only one that would kind of listen to me. My prayer is that, you know what? I pray that he made a decision to surrender his life. It gives me hope. Helps me to believe. Helps me to know that what I'm doing for God is not in vain. That we can go and we can tell people, you have no idea what people are going through. Amen. This COVID and, and, and all this political upheaval and confusion and folks running around, they don't know if they're girls and boys and, and, and just acting crazy. People need God. Amen. We, we, can't be at the, we can't be at the church acting crazy. People, people need help. Amen. And sometimes uh, the only Jesus people will ever see is you. That's the only Jesus people will ever see. Amen. And we, you know, we ain't got to break out the hermeneutics. Come on, somebody. Well, you know, in the Greek, and you know. <laughs> Amen. You know what? God bless you. God love you. We just want you to, hey, we got church what, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, or whatever. Oh, why don't you come visit us sometime? Amen. You know, I really appreciate that. I start seeing this on outreach. We go on outreach, and, and these guys, they begin to witness and pass out flyers, and then they'll just ask, hey, is there anything that we could pray for? I was like, okay. I was thinking to myself, this is new. They begin to pray for people. Believe me, we have no idea. Jesus went about doing good. Listen, doing things like that. We'll bring, how many know that, that works don't save us? Amen. We, we know that, right? We're saved by faith through grace. But it's in the doing that it, it can stir us to believe again. So I can believe this. God is with us. I tell you, man, it'll stir your heart. We can't be some, I, I can be a curmudgeon, man, and just sit at home. Life's not fair. Amen. You know, 47, 48 years old, acting like I'm 12. Get out of here. I'm going to go out and do what God called me to do. Take my mind off myself. And God can boost that faith and cause you to believe again and stir your heart. Can you say amen? He can. He can do it. But we got to bring it all to Jesus. He said, today, Lord, I brought to you my son. That's what deliverance happened. He brought his, he brought his problems. He brought everything. He brought his unbelief to Jesus, and God did a miracle. Can we do that tonight? I believe people got set free tonight. Amen? I believe God set some people free. Amen? Don't, 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 don't let the service end right here. Amen? Take it with you tomorrow. Some of you going back to work, going, going to school, whatever, take, take that victory. Amen? Take it with you. Let, let God touch you. Let God use you. Amen? Roam around in the dominion that God has given you. Amen? Let God throw his weight around. He wants to be your hero. Can you say amen? He wants to come through in the clutch. I preached this morning that God is our help. Can you say amen? God will work with us and God will work for us. Let him do both. Can you say amen? So thank God. Uh, amen. You remember all this week, amen, uh, the church doors are open uh, Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. We come, we pray, uh, we believe God for what he wants to do. Hallelujah. You come and get the mind of God for your week. Hallelujah. I remember mid, uh, uh, midweek service and all that God wants to do, uh, pray for the conference. Our heads are bowed. I want to pray that God would be with us as we go tonight. Uh, Sergio, in the back of you, would lift your voice and close in prayer, brother.